Welcome to another Stage Analysis video. It is Wednesday the 14th of June 2023. Today's video is going to be a special group focus on the automobiles group which has been racing up the relative strength rankings over the, the last three months or so and what when it back in all the way back in April time, it was all the way down at the the bottom of the RS ranking, and has now moved up to second in the overall rankings. I've highlighted it on the the weekend posts over the last few weeks as the the leading stock in the group at the moment, Tesla, started to to break out into stage two again. So it's one of the the key parts of the stage analysis method is what we call the the forest to the trees approach obviously those of the uh, members on the website will know that i've talked about this many many times but a key factor of that approach is where we look for the strengthening market we want the market to be technically healthy and then we look for emerging group themes or strong group themes ideally emerging group themes when they're still fairly early in the move so at this point in time you don't want to be looking looking at semiconductors for example which is all the way at the top of the RS rankings and has been for the majority of the last five four or five months now so hence why I did videos earlier in the year on the emerging group theme there all the way back in December time when we were at that and January when it was starting to move move out into early stage two and then obviously follow through since then so now that's a quite a long way into stage two now whereas automobiles group is a new emerging theme and so as i said a big part of the forested trees approach is to look for some of those emerging themes not just the strongest themes before we then drill down into the group and look for the best stocks within the group so many different ways that you can do that so i'm going to teach you in this video a few of the ways that i use using the various relative strength tools market breadth tools and looking at the the individual charts themselves with via stage analysis so i'm going to jump into the the group chart first so we use the 100 and 405 dow jones us industry groups for the relative strength rankings each week so this automobiles group here it's actually fairly weighted by Tesla. You can see it's very, very similar to the Tesla chart. Obviously, it broke out at the same time. It's I think they're they're cap weighted. So Tesla has a big influence on the actual groups. So you can see we're just as the automobiles group itself just breaking out into early stage two here last week. We're following through this week so far with a break above what we call the Mansfield RS0 line. So that in this case, because it's a group chart, it's the group divided by the S&P 500. And then we have a 52-week moving average, which is this blue line here, which is what we refer to as the zero line. As on the Mansfield chart, we have that line is flattened out as a zero line. So this is the 52-week moving average, whereas obviously on this chart here, that is a, that is a, a line. So... All that is is the moving average flattened out and then this line is then relative to that. So moves as such, whereas obviously on this chart, we've got our much different moves. So this gives you a little bit more context than the flattened Mansfield relative strength, as you can also get the angle of the moving average that you can't see on the flattened version. And then you can see whether it's an, an early breakout attempt or not. So once this, what we look for ideally in the method is for this to be flattening, which you can see at the moment, or for it to already be rising when you get a, a break above or when the, the stage two breakout happens. So the point at, at this point here, you can see it's above a flattening mental relative strength line here. So Ideally, we want to see that now start to, to turn up and follow through and for this to hold hold above as this moves out, whether it has pullbacks, follows through or not. We want to see that relative strength line hold above its 52-week moving average there. So as I said, this just moving out into stage two at the moment, if we look... There's a, a few different ways that you can look at the group in terms of looking at different ETFs. The, there's not many ETFs for the automobiles group they don't have a lot of volume so you may end up having to if you do want to trade it via an ETF then maybe a little bit more wary of them as they're quite thin you can see there's only 29,658 volume on this one and this is a weekly chart so very very thin and 
if you drill down into that holding so you can see here this chart obviously not looking immediately like the group chart itself which is very more similar to to the tesla chart as i said this is looking more like the semiconductors chart and if you drill down into the holdings you will see why so this is c a r z so this is the major auto etf so if we look at its holdings you can see nvidia tesla Taiwan Semiconductor, Google, Microsoft, Samsung, Apple, so advanced micro devices, Texas Instruments. So you can see there's a lot of semiconductors, IT stocks in here, obviously Google, etc. But they have got obviously some car stocks in there. You can see Mercedes Benz is in here. It got Tesla, obviously, one of the, the second the biggest holding at 5.5%. General Motors down there, Honda Motor. So there is obviously car um, stocks scattered throughout the ETF, but it's also heavily weighted with semiconductors and tech stocks as well. So it's actually quite a quite a mixed ETF in that regard. Like I said, looks very similar to the the um, semiconductor ETFs at the moment. So if we look at another one. DRIV Global X Autonomous and Electric Vehicles ETF. So this, if we have a look, is a Global X ETF. So focused on the EV theme, really. If we go down to the, the holdings in this one, you can see again, NVIDIA is its largest holding once more, 6.38%. Then Tesla, Apple, Google, Intel, Qualcomm, Microsoft. So again, lots of semiconductors, lots of tech stocks mixed in with the auto stock so not really a pure auto etf again so again if we go back to the chart different to to the group chart again but also breaking out into stage two at the moment you can see see initial breakout attempt here earlier move did fail slightly underneath the 30 week moving average there would have been stopped out by investor stop loss so failed stage two attempt so it's re-attempting to move out into stage two over the last four or five weeks here so that one's starting to to make a move but again like i said very heavily weighted in lots of tech stocks more than the actual auto stocks fdrv so fidelity electronic vehicles and future transportation etf a little bit weaker than the, the group ETF, but again, potentially just testing stage two levels. Had an initial failed stage two attempt, still under resistance here, so and not above its manageable relative strength line yet. Again, if we look at the holdings of this, the um, volume first, still very, very thin on this one, only 42,881 so far this week. So we're on Wednesday at the moment, so another very, very thin ETF. We look at its holdings. Once again, just look at the top 10 here. We've got Tesla, NXP, Semiconductors, On Semiconductors, Samsung, LG, NVIDIA, The Auto, ST Microsoft, Garmin, Adaptive. So it's only actually, well, we've got two car companies in the top 10 holdings of this one again. So again, very much influenced by semis and tech stocks once more so what you might find is that you need to make your own etfs from the stock so in order to to track the group chart more faithfully you could obviously use the different relative strength um, techniques in order to create your own ETF of five to ten stocks, maybe even three to five, and then obviously using the the top RS stocks as they move. You can use point and figure relative strength in order for that to, and then change it up as they as they change every every so often, monthly or quarterly, or some reasonable technique like that where you can obviously just pick the the stronger stocks from the group moving in stage two and then create your own sort of mini etf and that will give you a, a better way to track it obviously or using the the large caps in the group potentially if you want something that's slower more like an etf so if we go to next part i want to talk about the um, the breadth in the group. So this is the from Investors Intelligence website. So this is the auto manufacturing group. So this is a little bit different than the the auto the Dow Jones US industry group of auto make um, is it automakers so automobiles. Sorry, that's what's going. This is the auto manufacturers group from the um, IBD um, groups. So 
not quite slightly different makeup, but gives you a very similar picture in terms of the actual stocks. There's with this, this is the percentage of stocks on a point and figure buy signal, so the bullish percent for the group. So this at the moment is at 38.1%. And because it's reversed this month back through this, what we call the, the key 30% level, whether I've drawn that at the right level or not, might not have there, but yeah, that's the 30% level. As we reverse back through that this month this is on a, a bull alert signal at the moment so basically we're in a column of x's and we're on bull alert coming out of the lower zone so we've been you can see the vast majority of last year nine is september so 2021 all the way back from 2021 september there and then all through last year the majority of the time it was in the lower zone below the 30 percent level most of the time below the 40 percent level as well so with these charts same with the moving average breadth charts that i do each week when you're below 40 percent you tend to be more in a stage four type environment for the group but with breadth charts you're looking for reversals out of the lower zone so we use the 30 percent level with bullish percent indexes and you when you get a reversal out from the lower zone you flip to a bull alert status so this when you're in the column of x's you're on offense so you're on bull alert we're on offense so you're testing the long side and then to move to bull confirm this will need to move above this level here which looks to be about the 42 percent level at the moment if we look at this on a line chart you can see it a little bit easier